my largest complaint and issue with working entertainment was where the hell is HR? This place is lawless. Unfortunately, some of the things mentioned here are, I would say, commonplace, unfortunately, if you have worked in entertainment. And also, there is an element of coercion, a huge element of coercion when you work and do any type of labor in a capitalist system. So a lot of these complaints and coercion, even if you haven't worked in entertainment, you might have experience at work separately. So I'll try to do separate trigger warnings there because going through the complaint itself, I was like, oh, this is a lot. This is, this is very unfortunate. So let's go through the agenda and then we'll get into these nine damn claims. I'm going to state my biases and predispositions in the beginning, which we usually do. But I think for this, it's really important, particularly because of the nature of the claims. So we'll talk about that because everyone, you know, has a little bit of biases, whether positive or negative. In mine, I would say in this instance are, I am just really sad by these claims, to be honest. Because I do really, I would say, hold Lizzo in such high esteem. I like her music. I like pop music. She reminds me a lot. And a lot of the criticism she's gotten about her music remind me so much of Whitney Houston. And that when Whitney, Whitney Houston is my favorite. And Whitney Houston, in the height of pop music, a lot of Black people gave Whitney Houston a hard time. And we're like, it's too white. This is not, this is pop music. Like, this is not what people want. And Lizzo has received the same criticisms. I see a lot of similarities there. And then also, though empathy in that Lizzo has been treated very awfully because she is a larger black woman people treat her very bad and simultaneously on the other side of my positive biases in reading these claims um the three dancers who have put forth this lawsuit most black women are not treated well at work so huge amount I would say empathy there but not just empathy I'm like oh I see myself and a lot of this I'm there is we're gonna there's one of the claims is assault I'm like oh my boss did the same exact thing to me <laughs> Same exact thing. And so going through this complaint, to be honest, has been really hard. I'm like, oh, so say that at the beginning. So then we'll get through the nine claims and then let me make me small. And then we're going to specifically focus um, a lot of the time on hostile work in my environments, specifically around sexual harassment. Often sexual harassment is when people talk about it, they talk about it between the dynamic of men and women at work, because largely because we live in a patriarchal society, men hold a lot more power at work. However, that power dynamic of sexual harassment does happen between women as well. And so we're going to talk about coercion and capitalism and specifically how enter the entertainment industry is very coercive. Having worked in it, having we've covered enough lawsuits in it, the element of coercion can't be understated here. And that I see a lot of people being like, oh, well, they could have quit. And I'm like, well, this is their dream job. Why should they have to quit because their boss is allegedly like being an ass? That that's not that's not a good reason. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we're gonna talk about the alleged workplace violence because there is a kidnapping claim in here, which child. People really do act a fool at work. And then lastly, we're going to end with, because three things can be true at once, which is the media massage noir and how Lizzo is being treated with these allegations. Because I don't appreciate that either. I don't appreciate it. So Exactly. Exactly. People always say they can quit like bills are going to wait. Exactly. And we're going to talk about that because this specific instance also brings up the gig economy in that dancers, I'm going to refer to them as employees um, because they did work for her. However, they're not employees from the traditional sense. There's no 401k, there's no Roth IRA, there's no health insurance, and none of that. There are allegations that this was their only job, and when they went to seek other employment, they were told by um, Lizzo's production company, like, no, I don't care if you're not getting paid for this day, you need to wait, because we need to put you on hold. And that, that adds another level of why somebody would allow their employer to potentially abuse them. Well, it's like, well, bills do have to pay. So we're going to get into it. Using the wine and shit. Look at my little setup that we look cute. Okay. Let's enter. This. Can I do it? Yeah. Okay. Let's enter this mode here. Okay. Yes. Cheers. I don't even have a drink, but I have my water. Cheers to us. Yes. I have my water too. All right, we're using Wine and Chill's layout, all right? Okay, so we're gonna go over the claims. So FEHA is the Fair Employment and Housing Act of whatever mm -hmm. year from California. So this is a this is a civil case though. So they're pretty much Correct. going for money. 
I think yeah, people sometimes want to talk about criminality and those type of things, but this is a civil case. They are going mm-hmm. after money, yeah. which I feel there's, like they, they have a right to do. Yeah, there's no guilty, there's no innocent. They're just liable and not liable or contributory negligent and how, how much liable you want to be. But like, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, so the first case of action, cause of action is hostile work environment sexual harassment, which is all plaintiffs, all defendants. And then the second one is the failure to prevent or remedy the hostile work environment sexual harassment. We get religious harassment against Shereen Quigley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she already admitted to this. <laughs> and Why would you blow your the cluster out? Um, um, cluster. Failure to prevent or remedy religious harassment, which is all plaintiffs, all defendants. Because Grace had a cute little um, wrap up of this. So this is specifically to um, the religious harassment allegation. Here First of all, this is her Instagram page. Her name is Charlene Quigley. She makes it oh, the very go. well Charlene, known there we go. On, on her Instagram. So Charlene is the captain of their dance team. A dance captain for Lizzo. She dances with Lizzo. Not only that, but she loves Jesus. And um, she wants everybody around her to know that Jesus loves them too. All right, girl, you know, I think it's fine to be religious and to love your religion and whatnot. But when you start like being obsessive about it and trying to push, shove it down people's throats, that's when people get uncomfortable. That's when it starts to give cult energy. You know what I mean? Um, but I digress. So take a look at this post that she recently made about how she has no problem letting people know um, that Jesus loves them at work. She really posted this, you guys, and she's in in the middle of this lawsuit. She posted this, you guys, me telling everyone at work, Jesus loves them. And that is exactly the problem that people have with her. They are trying to work. They're trying to dance. They are trying to shake a tail feather. And this woman is bothering her them about some Jesus fellow. Like that is too much. Um, Shirlene, please. It's great that you love Jesus and whatnot, but you, you need to learn what is and isn't appropriate, all right? Some Jesus fellow really made me laugh. <laughs> Grace is silly. Racial mm-hmm. harassment um, from Williams and Davis against the agency. Mm-hmm. Disability discrimination from Ariana Davis and the agency in Lizzo. Intentional interference with prospective economic advantage, all plaintiffs against the agency. Assault, which is Rodriguez against Lizzo, and then false imprisonment, which is Davis against the agency. I will say, just off the bat, from these claims, this is all the claims, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, okay. going back, I think her religious harassment and intentional interference with prospective economic advantage are, like, their two strongest claims. I think those two and ironically and oddly enough, the false imprisonment one, because that is easy enough to prove. Did you hold me somewhere against my will and not allow me to leave? And that one is always interesting because the way it's explained to people, like we usually think of false imprisonment is the civil action to kidnapping. So when you hear kidnapping, you think taken, you think like this dramatic thing. And I'm like, ah, actually, if we talk about work, and all of these like corporate psychopaths that some of us have dealt with, a lot of false imprisonment unfortunately occurs, but people don't have the verbiage to call it that, which is HR can't lock you in a room. You are not like, they are legally not allowed to do that, but that occurs often enough. So I think that one based on the set of facts they stated is easy enough. Like, yeah, this takes off all the elements, unfortunately. So on creating a hostile work environment, trigger warning to this section, truthfully. Now, Under California law, so the first cause of action under California law to establish a prima facie case of retaliation, the plaintiff must show that he or she engaged in a protected activity. So you were doing your job, you and you stated like, hey, I didn't like that so and so touched me that way I work. Two, the employer subjected the plaintiff to an adverse employment action. So after you tell your employer, like, hey, I didn't like that they touched me, the employer then says, like, okay, this is, we're talking about dancers. So say you were so always supposed to be in the front of the tour, and the minute that you're like, I didn't like that Stephanie, you know, Stephanie pulled my hair. Like, why did you allow her to do that? And then if the employer is like, you know what, because you complained on Stephanie, and I like Stephanie so much better than you, you're going from the front all the way to the back. Now you are going to get less opportunities because nobody can see you if you're in the back, et cetera. That would be an adverse workplace action. And then three, the protected activity and the employer's adverse action were causally connected. 
So proving the causation, usually in these types of cases, they prove the causation by um, when it took place in time. So you did something, you complained about something, and then the next day they fired you. Or the next day they're like, you know what, actually we're suspending you, etc. According to this complaint, there was no HR. My largest complaint and issue with working entertainment was, where the hell is HR? This place is lawless. A lot of these allegations stem from a few specific incidences, and the largest incident um, that people are talking about is a night out in Amsterdam. So this is from paragraph 34 of the complaint. As it turns out, Lizzo had planned a night out in Amsterdam's notorious red light district, known for its abundance of sex theaters, sex shops, and clubs and bars where nudity is on full display. The main event of the night was a club called Banana Bar, I think that's how you say it, where patrons are allowed to interact with completely nude performers. The three plaintiffs were invited to go out with Lizzo. So it's like a big honor, like, oh, great. Like she often takes them out, etc. takes out her dance team. When they heard where they were going, like, hey, I don't really want to go anymore. According to the, uh, to the complaint, they were told like, well, Rudy told her you're coming, so you can't not go. Um, Shanta said that it was too late to back out because Lizzo had already, she had already sent Lizzo the headcount for the evening. Again, feeling the looming pressure of job insecurity, should plaintiffs abstain from attending, plaintiffs reluctantly went along for the evening. This is very believable, and this is very much, if um, in the vein of the allegations, this is what textbook coercion. While at Banan Bar, things quickly got out of hand. And again, all of these are allegations. Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the nude performers, catching dildos launched from the performers' vaginas, and eating bananas protruding from the performers' vaginas. The, what was happening at this show reads for, it's salacious. It makes people have an entire opinion about now who Lizzo is. But like those kind of performances, it's not, it's not even like a Hollywood thing. It is just like an exclusive elite type of club that exists in every like super major city. These are, this is prevalent in New York, it's prevalent in LA, it's prevalent in the European cities where you get to go and have like shows put on specifically for you and yours. So in New York City, there's a club called The Box. It's on Christie Street. Have you been? I haven't. In the early 2000s, you would go in, no phones were allowed. You could not, no pictures, no phones. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's, it, it, like that, sh that, like, <laughs> <laughs> you like it i love it but not with your employee and i think yeah, that, i mean that's but like going with your going with your tour people is very normal is it appropriate no why lizzo would invite her dancers to go that's the problem you cannot bring your employee to any type of place that is sexual in nature because it's automatically sexual harassment particularly when the employee has stated i don't really want to go I'm uncomfortable. Like, you know, you like it. I love it. That's cute. I'll see you in the morning at work. That is the root of sexual harassment is pushing your, um, I don't even want to say sexual preferences, pushing anything that's sexual in nature, doing it, talking about it around your employee is sexual harassment. Lizzo then turned her attention to Miss Davis, who's one of the plaintiffs, and began pressuring Miss Davis to touch the breast of a nude woman performing at the club. Lizzo began leading a chant, goading Miss Davis. Miss Davis said three times, loud enough for all to hear, I'm good, expressing her desire not to touch the performer. The chant grew louder and more strident, demanding a visibly uncomfortable Miss Davis to engage with the performer. Miss Davis reiterated her discomfort, stating, I'd rather not because I'm not, I'm cool here in the corner. Finally, the course became overwhelming and a mortified Miss Davis acquiesced in an attempt to bring an end to the chance. After Miss Davis briefly touched the performer's breast, the group burst into laughter. Miss Davis abashedly laughed along, trying to hide how uncomfortable this interaction made her. Her efforts to conceal her discomfort were apparently unsuccessful, as on separate occasions, BGBT management in attendance, as well as Lizzo's security team, asked Miss Davis if she was okay. Miss Davis replied kind of to one request and no to another. What is most alarming to me is the disregard of someone's space. If you want to touch the breast, touch the breast. Nobody's stopping you from touching the breast. What does the employee have to touch the breast for? For what? No reason. It's, un it's unnecessary. And that's, this is a great point, Kyrie, because I've seen a lot of people say this. I also hate that people are saying Lizzo thought she was friends 
um, was with friends, but she was with her employees. And it's like, no, friends need to understand consent too. Exactly. If you know someone that you're very, like, for example, one of my dear friends is not a touchy person. I love hugs. I'm a big hugger. I don't hug her. Every once in a while, she'll surprise me and she'll give me a hug. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. But she, generally speaking, when I see her, I'm like, hey, girl, um, I just saw her yesterday. We don't hug because she doesn't want to be hugged. And I think a lot of people think of consent as like, well, my intention wasn't bad. So if my intention to hug you is not bad, you just let me hug you because you're making it awkward. And it's like, you're making it awkward by putting your body on somebody who doesn't want your body on them. It's very simple. Hey. We fine. In addition to pressuring an unwilling Miss Davis into interacting with a nude performer, plaintiffs and all in attendance were unable to avoid witnessing Lizzo's incredibly public displays of sexual affection with her boyfriend. At one point, the couple exuberantly took Shanta and two members of the band, which performed with Lizzo on tour to a back room before returning sometime later. This paragraph comes off as very shady. Like, well, this is none of our business if they are consensually, you know, adults doing whatever they want to do. But in the context of what workplace harassment is, if you are overtly sexual in a way that you are making your employees feel uncomfortable, it is sexual harassment. So yes, according to this, Shanta consented as well as the other two employees, but the other employees that are sitting around there are most likely very uncomfortable because they don't want to be there in the first place and they don't want to see it. They're like, oh, okay, you like it, I love it, but like, why do I have to be here? And that's largely when you look at workplace harassment, particularly in the sexual nature, these types of things come up. Exactly, all this in the workplace is wild. This is, this is very wild behavior. And I would say like, this is very on par, unfortunately, for entertainment and particularly in music. I can explain why things are not as salacious and why this fixation on these aspects of it actually obscure the actual like meat and potatoes that these girls have against Lizzo. Um, and I do feel like they, they are due financial compensation. I do feel like they have a right to pursue her. It just is not that wild to me because I have existed in an, in, I've like worked in this industry and like I've been invited out and had similar experiences and I pers but you know, as, as Stephanie has said, the legality of it is if the person feels that way, they have legal recourse. I'm, I'm only the before 12. They're like, Stephanie's a lawyer. Stephanie got to leave at 12 o'clock. We're not doing nothing over here. Which is, I always think it's like kind of interesting. But yeah, the contextualization is needed because I think without the context, you read it and you're like, what are y'all doing? And I'm like, everybody, unfortunately, is doing something very similar. They shouldn't be creating. You could do it, but don't create a hostile work environment, a.k.a. your employee doesn't need to Okay, so when does it become hostile? That's where I got hung up at. Because I'm mm -hmm. like... You know, when does it be, when is the, the fallacy of trying to create a sisterhood and then also yeah. be the big bitch boss in charge? Yeah. When does that run amok? And I think the, the clear thing is that Lizzo wanted a sisterhood where she was never talked back to. And that's not a sisterhood. And you exactly. have to make that decision. And Lizzo should have had the wherewithal as a grown woman to understand that, uh, you know, especially with the, the way they went about firing, particularly Crystal. A lot of people are coerced into things, maybe not to this level of egregious behavior at work to keep a job. This is Lizzo's, I will say, to be honest, ill-advised statement. I don't, I don't, I highly doubt her, and I meant to pull up the lawyer, of Marty Singer. I didn't put him on a slide, but I'll, I'll talk about him right now for a second. I highly doubt the lawyer approved this because this is nonsensical. She has decided to retain Marty Singer, then did the textbook defense strategy, very victim blaming and victim shaming in the public eye. By doing a victim shaming and victim blaming defense, essentially you have the plaintiff thinking, oh my God, everyone hates me. You know what? I just want this to go away. This is actually ruining my life. I will settle for less. So that is very much his strategy. And he's already started that strategy in that he pulled up a video. Um, we're going to get into it. But uh, Miss Davis was on. I keep calling her Miss Davis. I can't remember her first name. Hold on. Because I'm like, she's very young over here calling her Miss Davis. Um, Ariana. 
Ariana Davis. Ariana was on Lizzo's show. That's how she got um, to be a dancer for Lizzo. Watch out for the big girls. And so he pulled, Marty Singer pulled a video for TMZ of Ariana on the show being like, I'm so excited. This is amazing. This is such a great opportunity, blah, blah, blah. His statement as the lawyer and as the public person who's allowed to give statements on Lizzo's behalf was, does this person look like they're being harassed at work? Do they look like they're being abused? They seem like they're having a great time. This is a crock of shit. Which, how many people have, I love my job. I love my job. I love everything. I think it's great. Ugh. I go through hell touring. I love to tour. <laughs> <laughs> and just smile through. I'm like, that's not showing anything. That's proving nothing. So this was Lizzo's statement that her team put out the not the same day that it came out i believe the following day from a legal sense this is a cluster particularly this um statement so these last few days and it was on instagram and then she had it on um twitter so this i just pulled it from twitter but it's the same one everywhere these last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respect respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous to not be addressed. So the first is denial. So the second paragraph, these sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate, unprofessional. When you say these sensationalized stories, you have then undone the denial and essentially admitted like, yeah, but it's an exaggeration. Did y'all or did you not go to Banan Bar? It's a yes or no. As the employer, you cannot take them there. These are all yes or no. If the event happened, then it's workplace harassment. There's not any gray area in this, in that because there's so many allegations of alleged harassment, anything that resulted in Ariana being pushed out or being fired is then a retaliation in terms of legality. Did all these things occur? Yes or no. So if in sincerity, if she were to have said, this is a complete lie. She's never been to Benin Bar with her team. Then we would be having a different conversation. Clearly, if your team took over a day to say this, clearly y'all went to this place. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. Y'all shouldn't have been there together. How other people feel about like your sexuality. Um, other people shouldn't have any damn feelings about your sexuality. How your employee feels about you being sexual around your employee is very cut and dry. They're your employee. They're there to work. They're not there to participate in, you know, maybe an erotic film. That's not their job description. As an artist, I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. The intention is also irrelevant to be honest, um, everyone should be allowed to have their standards. And I think, and I low-key, I think we all know black women are held to this space where like, we're not allowed to be direct. We're not allowed to be direct. We're not allowed to hold people to high standards. And this is to the fact of if you're a dancer, their job is to dance. So if they're not dancing full out that you want them to do, you're allowed to like, hey, that look bad. <laughs> that look bad. I paid you for a service. Do the service, girl. Do it again. That's fine. That's not what this is about. This is about whether or not you're just saying that as a pretext because they have complained about harassment. Also, the intention to make somebody feel uncomfortable has to do with self-awareness. Whether or not you as an employer have awareness has nothing to do with the fact that you have a legal duty to your employee to not make them uncomfortable for no reason. And this part, I agree with her 1000% on this part in that I'm not the villain that people in the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. And we're going to get into like the massage noir on the end, which is there are a lot of people because they're so anti-black and they're so fat phobic. They didn't like Lizzo to begin with. And now they have an excuse to say awful things. They, have, they don't care about Ariana. They don't care about the other women. They don't care about how people are treated in the workplace. They are just excited to say awful things to a large black woman. And for that, she's allowed to have her feelings about it. I wouldn't have wrote all of this though. And I always use the example with people that like, they're like, my intention wasn't that. And I'm like, if you accidentally punch me in my eye or you walk by and you're flailing around because you're joking around and you elbow me in my eye, the intention is irrelevant because my eye is still black and blue. 
So uh, please give me my ice pack and let's go about the day. The intention is really irrelevant because now I have a black eye and now we have to explain why I have a black eye. Somebody's saying that maybe they should, what's the resolution to have a therapist on tour? I think the legality of Lizzo hiring the therapist is a, also a mucky situation that no, that yeah, therapist cannot yeah. come through your employer. No. That's a big But giving them the funds to say like, hey, at this specific hour, go see your therapist that you paid for with the health insurance I should have gave you that I didn't give you. I think that could have helped. And then having an adult that you listen to, this just reminds you like, hey, I know it's not fun. But I have to remind you, you can't be taking everybody everywhere. Yeah. Can I'm happy to the say the travel. Are uncomfortable. You need to, there should have, one of those managers should have stepped in when the, once the girls try to speak to her and, you know, address that, like she needs to stop inviting everybody out and she needs yeah. to like, be like, if she's going to do the sisterhood thing, be more aware of who's uncomfortable and who's not. She needs to manage that. Okay, the last thing I wanted to address, because we do need to go, Mike.